Salvum Fox Servum Tum, Deus Meus Sperantum In Te. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. We have these words in today's introit, Save your servant, my God, who hopes in you. And the introit of every Mass sets the tone for the whole Mass. All the propers are linked together, purposely chosen by the Church for that day. And the introit gives us that beginning, that, that insight into, into the focus of the Church that day. And so when we look at the introit and we see this desire for salvation based upon this hope in God, we see that the church especially wants us to, to reflect upon, to meditate upon the virtue of hope. In fact, this whole season after Pentecost is the time of hope, the green vestments. The church uses that color to symbolize hope, that the Holy Ghost has come, Pentecost has happened, and the next thing we're, we're waiting for, we're hoping for, is heaven, right? is salvation. And throughout, throughout this whole time after Pentecost, but we see especially today, the church wants us to um, be fed, to be inculcated with hope. And now hope, we know it's a, a theological virtue. Right? It's, it's one of the three. It's a, a cornerstone of the Catholic life. And so it's important for us to, to know what it is or, or why it's important or, or what it's supposed to do. And the church answers all of these questions in the Mass today. And perhaps the most familiar prayer of hope that we have, that we know, is the act of hope. And that act of hope is in itself a a mini catechism on the virtue. It's the church telling us to ask for things, telling us why we're asking for things, why we're hoping, in order to help us understand what hope is. And in that act of hope, we start out with saying why we hope, and then we end by saying the things we hope for. And so we can just look at the act of hope in connection with the Mass today um, to really Again, take this opportunity, this, this invitation of the church to, to hope. So firstly, in the act of hope, we, we list the reasons why. Right? We say, oh God, and then we mention why we're going to hope. We say we rely on his power, right? his goodness, and his promises. And so firstly, his power. Right? The reason that we hope for things, the reason that we hope in God is because he's all-powerful. And we see that in the, the Alleluia of today's Mass. God is king over all the earth. That's from Psalm 94. It's a, it's a psalm that, that the priests pray every day at Matins. God is king over all the earth. That's why we hope. He has this, this infinite, almighty power in in any part of life, in any part of space, in any part of the universe. There's no place where he has less power than another. He's king over all the earth. So because he's so powerful, um, we have this great hope. In addition to his power, we say that we rely on his goodness. And we see that in the gospel today. Right, our Lord... He comes upon this funeral procession. There's a man that's, that's died, the only son of a widow. And this is our Lord. He's, he's moved by misericordia, right? by, by compassion, by mercy, by goodness. And he, and he works this miracle of, of bringing this man back to life and giving him to his mother. And it's this proof of, of this goodness, of this care of God for, for what happens in our lives. So he's all-powerful, he's the one that's the king, and he cares about each one of us individually and, and what goes on in our lives and what affects us, right? We see that in, in the gospel, right? And God has visited his people. God, God visits us all the time, individually. In addition to his goodness, we say we also rely on his promises, 
So God's made certain promises, and we can use those again as this foundation for our hope. And we have that in the epistle. Right? It says, both positively and negatively, we have these promises of God. So firstly, negatively, right? God, God is not mocked, right? Whatever we sow, that's what we're going to receive. So if we do evil, we can't hope to receive good. If we do good, we're, we're not going to expect evil, right? God's not mocked. He's, he's just. And so whatever we reap or whatever we sow, that's what we'll reap. All right? He tells us, in doing good, let us not fail. For in due time, we shall reap not failing. If we do good, if we don't fail in doing good, then we will reap, right? Then we will be saved. We will have this salvation. We ask for it in the intro, right? Save your servant who hopes. Give salvation to the one who hopes. So those are the reasons, right? We have this great foundation for hoping, for desiring, for wanting, for expecting. And then the rest of the act of hope, we, we mention things that we want, mention things that, that we desire, that we hope for. And ultimately, it's the effects of, of the mercy of God, which, which we also pray for in the introit. Miserere miki domine, have mercy on me, O Lord. And in particular, we say we want, we hope for the pardon of our sins and the help of grace. And those two are the means to life everlasting. We want the pardon of sin, the help of grace, in order to have salvation. And again, we see this ultimate desire of, of hope is salvation. Right? <clears throat> Because God's powerful, because he's good, because he's promised things, we want heaven. We hope for heaven. We're, we're, we're eagerly expecting salvation. Right? That's the greatness of, of the virtue of hope. Right? It's a virtue that inclines us, it pushes us to want salvation. Right? To not be satisfied with what this world offers, but to go higher. Right? We have that in the, in the gospel, right? Young man, I say to thee, arise. Right? I say to you, go higher. And in order to, to have this, this great hope, this great desire for salvation, this true desire, we need to have the, uh, the true dispositions. Right? If we're hoping for salvation, it's because we, we know that we don't have it on our own. And because of that, we need a savior. We need one who gives salvation. Right? If, if we think that we're sufficient on our own, then we're not going to hope. If we have everything under control, then we don't need God to get us salvation. If we think we can get it on our own. And we have that in the epistle, right? If any man thinks he's something, whereas he is nothing, he deceives himself. None of us can achieve these things that we want, the pardon of our sin, the help of grace, life everlasting, without a Savior. And if we think we're self-sufficient, if we think we're something, if we think we don't need God's power and goodness and promises, if we think we have it all under control, then we won't hope, then we won't have this virtue. So, to, to summarize, if we're going to hope, we need to, to realize that we need God. We're utterly dependent upon him. And we need to realize that he's there for us, right? That he visits his people. That he has this, this power, this, this mercy. And so let's pray today for, for this grace of hope for ourselves. And we pray for the grace for the church and the collect. All right, we say, let your continual mercy cleanse and defend the church. Right? We hope for the, the cleansing, the defense of the church from God. Right? We're not sufficient on our own. And so let's, let's really ask for this increase in this virtue today, um, to put it at the center of our spiritual life, where it's meant to be, and to, to pray often to our Lord these, these words of the intro, which we pray every Friday at Compline. Save your servant, my God, who hopes in you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.